Hello people of God, I would like to share with you this short presentation about the 500 year anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. I am Brother Joe Ars Alferes of the Discalds Carmelite Secular from the community of St. John of the Cross here in Cotabato City. So the 500th anniversary of the arrival of the Christianity in the Philippines. The preparation of the Jubilee year in 2021, which marks the 5th centenary or 500th anniversary of the, of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines, is among the topics to be discussed during the 116th Plenary Assembly of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines or the CBCP in Cebu City. The Jubilee year is considered significant for the Catholic faithful, especially the Cebuanos, since history has it that Christianity first took root in the shore of Cebu in 1521. Christian faith then propagated to other islands in the country and it's continuing to flourish until today. Cebu is recognized as the cradle of Christian civilization, and its archdiocese is considered as the largest in the country with the most number of Catholics, seminarians, as well as priests. The theme of this celebration is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 8, which is gifted to give. So this is in our, it's written in our logo, gifted to give. The theme and the logo of the celebration, Dove, the 500 year of Christianity, was approved by the members of the Permanent Council of the CBCP on September 18. Various elements of the logo, including the cross, a sheep, the sun, a rosary, among others. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines has released the official theme and the logo for the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the country, which will be marked in 2021. What about the meaning of the cross? The cross planted by the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan on the island of Cebu signifies Christianity and serves as the mast of a sheep. The sheep, the sheep represents the navigators of the expedition that brought the faith to the island. It has also signifies the church and its sacraments. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit, which shares the divine life of the sacraments of baptism. It also looks like a cloud that manifests in the presence of God. So you look at the logo, and that's the meaning of the cross, the sheep, as well as the symbolism of the dove. Then we have the image of Senor Santo Nino de Cebu, this is the oldest religious icon, a gift of Ferdinand Magellan to the first Filipino Catholics. Then, Cebu City Houses, especially the Magellan's Cross. I think majority of you were able to visit the Magellan's Cross. Or the Cross of Mag Ferdinand Magellan planted in the then Rajanate of Sugbo for the acceptance of Raja Humabon and his wife Juana of the Christian faith. So we have the arguments. Take note on these arguments. It is not a reminder of how we were colonized, but how Filipino embraced Catholicism, said the bishop, adding that colonization and the arrival of Christianity in the country are two different things. 
Duterte, as head of the state, cannot stop CBCP from holding the celebration. Duterte is against the church and he is also against in our God. If you still remember that he said, our God is a stupid God. May the, may the good Lord forgive this man. Bishop Arturo Bastes of the Sorsogon said that Filipino Catholics will celebrate the occasion even without Duterte. We do not need the opinion of Duterte. We will celebrate it without him, according to the bishop. The church is not imposing the celebration on people. Anyone is welcome to celebrate with us, said Bishop Roberto Santos of Balanga, adding that the celebration is an occasion to thank God for his protection for the past 500 years. It is also a journey of re-evangelization. In his pastoral visit to the Philippines in January of 2015, Pope Francis, noting that upcoming 500th anniversary of Christianity's arrival in the Philippines, challenged Filipinos to continue to let the Christian message bear fruit. He said, It is my hope that this important anniversary will point out to its continuing fruitfulness and its potential to inspire a society worthy of the goodness, dignity, and aspirations of the P Filipino people. It sustains our faith. We look forward with the gratitude of joy to March 16, 2021, the 5th centenary of the coming of Christianity to our beloved land. We remember with thanksgiving for the first mass celebrated in Limasawa Island on Easter Sunday, March 31, that same blessed year. We remember the baptism of Raha Humabon, who was given his Christian name, Carlos, and his wife, Hara Amihan, who was baptized Juana in 1521. Our eyes gazed on the Santo Nino de Cebu, the oldest religious icons in the Philippines. Gifts of Ferdinand Magellan to the Fili first Filipino Catholics that same year. Indeed, the year 2021 will be a year of a great jubilee of the church in the Philippines. The OFW filled up with once dormant churches in the United States, Hong Kong, Kuwait, Italy, Spain, Austria, New Zealand, Australia, and many other countries. They have taken over the pews formerly occupied by the Irish American of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. The Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Tagle, noted once, that in Brunei, most of the 20,000 Christians are Filipinos. Faith received, faith shared. A good number of bishops and priests coming from the Philippines have been entrusted with very varied ecclesiastical ministries. More recently, Pope Francis has appointed a Bicolano Bishop Adolfo Tito Iliana as the apostolic nuncio to Australia. A Filipino-born Salesian priest by the name of Father Pedro Baquero SDB, and he was my classmate when we were still in the seminary, and the Venetian, a Vincentian Father Rolando Santos of the Congregation of Mission are now bishops in Papua New Guinea. So I'm lucky to have a classmate who became bishops in Papua New Guinea by the person of Bishop Pedro Baquero. The acceptance of faith, it is not a reminder of how we celebrate, how we were colonized, but how Filipinos embrace Catholicism, according to Bishop Pabilio, also a former Salesian priest. 
Colonization and the arrival of Christianity in the country are two different things, he said. Filipinos are very much aware of this. Of this. It has been more than a century since the Philippines regained her freedom while millions of Filipinos continue to embrace the Catholic faith until today. Bishop Abilio stressed, A celebration of calling and other arguments. A quinquennial event is not just looking back to the past. It is also looking forward to the future. Yes, we have been chosen and truly gifted with a faith that carries a great responsibility. We gratefully accept the gift. We develop it and now it is our turn to pass it on to the others. That's why in our logo, Gifted to Give. As seen in the Philippines per perspective, in the third perspective, the embracing of another religion not healed by Filipinos and built by the invaders is seen as treachery, which is understandable. Yet, he does not imply that Filipinos should not celebrate the said celebration, but rather let them continue to do what they want. But he said the government cannot promise to celebrate along with them. And I think we can attest to that. Even the Catholic politicians, nobody greeted us. The 500 years celebration of Christianity in our country. Para bang silang lahat binubusalan. Anyone is welcome to celebrate with us, said Bishop Ruperto Santos Balanga, adding that the celebration is an occasion to thank God for His protection for the past 500 years. The Catholic Bishop Conference of the Philippines plans to celebrating the 500 years anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines this 2021 as a celebration of faith. What the Filipino Church will celebrate this 2021 is not colonization, but years of Christian faith, and that's clear, which is strongly justified by Monsignor Pablo Vergilio Chonco David. The natives of these islands welcome as a gift, albeit from people who were not necessarily motivated by the purest motives, writes Monsignor Pablo Vergilio Chonko David, the Bishop of Kaloocan, and the Vice President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. The Bishop points out that the natives did not equate Christianity with colon colonization. Instead, our own ancestors were intelligent enough to accept what was good and reject what was evil. In fact, at some point, the faith that they had embraced was no longer alien to them. It had succeeded in taking root in the fertile ground of our innate spirituality as people. Additionally, three prelates, namely Bishop Roberto Santos of Balanga, Onesto Onchonco of Cubao, and Arturo Bastes of Sorsogon, announced that the Catholic Church will continue the celebration even without the support of President Duterte. We do not need the opinion of Duterte. We will celebrate it without him, Bastes said in an interview. He added that the church respects the opinion of Duterte and stressed that it is not imposed to the Catholic faith on non-believers. He explained that the church will celebrate the occasion to thank God for his protection and provision for 500 years. Those 500 years in God's graces, God comes to us. Christianity is God's gift to us. It is the blessing and we are blessed and we have to be grateful to God. We have to appreciate the sacrifices and the services of those early missionaries who planted the seed of the gospel to us. It is our nature to be aware, to be always grateful. We express our debt 
and of gratitude, Santos said. This state statement was then agreed on Onchonko saying that the president has a very right to express his belief on religion. The Catholic Church will be celebrating still another angle of his, to the historic event of the Spaniards' arrival in 2015-21. The church celebration for 2021 will focus on the start of 500 years of Christian evangelization. What we are celebrating is not colonization of our country, but that despite the dark times in history, the light of faith has come to our land. Monsignor Joseph Tan of the Archdiocese of Cebu said, September 8, during the Feast of the Nativity of Our Blessed Virgin Mary in Cebu City. The Catholic Bishops Conference Secretary General by the name of Father Marvin Mejia said that aside from the upcoming historic event, environmental concerns will also be tackled during the gathering. The conference has invited experts to discuss environmental issues. And with that, my dear people of God, this is just an additional information as we celebrate to thank God for this 500 years of Christianity in our country, the Philippines. God bless you all. Once again, this is your friend. I am Brother Joe Ars Alferes of the Order of the Discalled Carmelite Secular. God bless you all. Mabuhay tayong lahat ng mga Katoliko.